Hello everyone, as you can see, I'm back to making Geometry Dash videos. In this video, I wanted to list some improvements I'd make to the Geometry Dash level editor. There are many things I like about the level editor, but in my opinion, there's still room for improvement. Before I begin the list, I'd like to make the disclaimer that some of the things I'm going to mention will be very subtle changes, but there's still things I wanted to include. Also, please note that these items are in no particular order. With all of the triggers currently in Geometry Dash, as well as with all of the triggers being implemented in the future, I believe that a trigger allowing you to toggle player input would fit right in. There currently is a trigger in the 2.2 editor that has a similar function, but I think the toggle input trigger I mentioned would be more useful. The 2.2 trigger nullifies your current mouse input, but you can just lift up and press down your mouse button again. This doesn't serve much purpose in my opinion. Although there are ways to restrict the player's movement without the use of a trigger like this, these methods don't always work perfectly, and players who are newer to the level editor often have a hard time doing them correctly. In addition, these methods that are commonly used aren't very efficient in comparison. The toggle jump trigger would be easy to use for all players, and coding it into the game should be rather simple as well, considering it's a lot less complex than many other triggers currently in the game. There are many ways that you could put this trigger to use. You could use it in auto levels to prevent people from killing themselves, which would be nice. Or you could use it in concepts and minigames, which are becoming more and more popular with each update to the game. There are also some applications in standard Geometry Dash levels, such as during an intro or outro or when you're trying to restrict the player from reaching an area of the level. I know this idea is going to sound similar to the toggle input trigger, but I'm still going to mention it because I think it could be used in a lot of cool ways, and I didn't just come up with this trigger because I'm out of ideas. So, how would this trigger work? It would pretty much be the opposite of the trigger I mentioned before this. You can use the click trigger to simulate the player clicking their mouse. If it was added, I think there should be a hold mode as well as a two-player mode if you wanted to simulate the player holding down the mouse or clicking a certain side of the screen. This trigger could be used in very similar ways to the trigger I mentioned prior to this. It could be used to create auto levels that look way more realistic, it could allow players who create games and concepts to do much cooler things, and it could even have some creative applications in normal Geometry Dash levels. I think there should also be some sort of effect that appears when this trigger is used, like a pulse on the player's icon for example. The reason I say this is because with this trigger, we could create auto levels that look exactly the same as if there was a player behind the controls. The purpose of an effect like this would be to help us distinguish legitimate runs of levels from auto levels. In Update 2.1, a feature known as Multi-Activate was implemented. This option was available for triggers that had spawn trigger enabled as well as jump warps. You can probably guess what it does. It allows you to activate an object more than once. This allowed creators to do things such as reuse jump orbs and create spawn trigger loops. This feature is incredibly useful, and I think it could be even more useful if other objects were given this ability, such as jump pads, triggers with touch trigger enabled, and portals. Also, with the reverse mode being added in 2.2, you will be able to play through parts of a level more than once, and reusable objects will come in handy. The obvious function of this trigger would be to create particles. Ideally, it should allow you to customize things such as the particle color, particle size, particle count, and particle mode. When I say particle mode, I mean being able to customize the way the particles behave. It should also give you the option to choose a group ID which determines the position that the particles are created at, similar to how the rotate trigger lets you use a group ID to determine the center of the rotation. I know some of you are probably concerned about the possibility of abuse. It may seem that players could use this trigger to lag lower end devices by spawning in unreasonable amounts of particles, but there's one simple reason why they wouldn't be able to do this. Geometry Dash sets a cap on the amount of particles allowed on the screen at once. You can see this for yourself if you spam down a bunch of jump pads or any other object that creates particles. The particle cap should prevent this kind of abuse from happening. So, let's say I was making a level and I wanted to add a custom background to it. 
So I make the background, but then I need to sync the background to the camera movement. Here's where the problem is. Since the player's X position and the camera's X position move at the same speed, syncing the horizontal movement to the camera isn't that difficult. All you have to do is use the lock to player X option in the move trigger. However, unlike the horizontal movement of the camera, you can't sync the background to the vertical movement of the camera using the lock to player Y option. If you try, then your background will move like this, which looks dumb. So, the idea I'm trying to propose here would be a lock to camera Y option in the move trigger. Alternatively, RobTop could add a whole new trigger into the game to serve this function, rather than just tweaking the move trigger. Either one of these changes would fit right in with the new camera controls being added in the future. Also, on a side note, I think an option to show the camera view while in the editor would be useful as well. This feature would be helpful when you're trying to create a background that's the right size. Geometry Dash has a number of key bindings that make editing levels a lot more efficient, or at least if you play the PC version of the game. Sorry mobile users. However, as I'm sure lots of you are aware of, these key bindings aren't currently customizable and there's no way to modify them from their default values. I'm not quite sure why RobTop hasn't implemented this yet. Maybe he simply doesn't see the need for it, maybe he just hasn't gone around to doing it yet, or maybe his coding engine doesn't allow him to do it for some odd reason. Assuming the problem isn't his coding engine, I think it would make a lot of sense for RobTop to implement this feature. Custom key bindings would allow people to use the keys that they're used to whilst creating levels. For example, I often find myself using the hotkeys I use for GIMP while creating a Geometry Dash level, or vice versa. Custom key bindings would allow me, as well as other creators, to use the keys that we prefer while in the editor. In addition to allowing customization, I think that there are a few additional key bindings that should be added. The key bindings on screen are some that I think would be helpful to level creators. I'm sure you all know about these things. They are little icons that appear all over the editor. When you click on them, they give you information about a certain editor feature, which is very helpful to players who are trying to get used to the editor interface. However, many of these explanations for 2.1 features are either extremely vague or simply contain no information at all. At first, I was just going to say, RobTop should fill these explanations in, and then move on to the next segment. However, I decided to go the extra mile and actually made up my own explanations for the triggers that were missing them. I left a pastebin link in the description for anybody who wanted to read them. There are still a few additional things I wanted to include in this video, but they weren't long enough for their own segment. So, in the end, I decided to just merge them together into one single, miscellaneous segment. The first thing on the list would be to increase the functionality of the scale tool. Using the scale tool, you can scale objects up to a maximum of 200% their original size. This is helpful, but I don't think it would hurt to increase the capacity of this trigger to give level creators more options. My second suggestion would be an option for solid blocks allowing you to switch them between solid and non-solid. This could be used for both decoration or gameplay purposes. Third, I think it would be nice if there was an alpha slider in an object's edit menu. You can already change an object's alpha value by using an alpha trigger, but an alpha slider would be a lot more convenient because you wouldn't have to create a new group ID for every new alpha value. My fourth suggestion is extremely subtle, but it's something that still gets on my nerves. In 2.1, an object was introduced that allowed you to display the count of an item ID. This allowed you to create things such as point systems in your levels. However, the thing that annoys me about them is that they aren't consistent with the level's global font. This makes it look really ugly when it's next to an object that is consistent with the level's font. Changing this shouldn't be difficult, and it would make levels look a lot better. This fifth one is very subtle as well, but I would like it if a blank ground was added. This ground is the closest thing we have to this at the moment, but it still has a square pattern on it. Since RobTop's added a blank background in, I think a blank ground would make sense as well. As I used the level editor over the past few years, a bunch of ideas built up in my mind about things that I'd like to either be added or changed. I'm glad that i finally written them down on paper, or I guess notepad in this case, and made a video like this one. The ideas I listed weren't the only ones I had, but they were the more interesting ones. I might make a part 2 to this video, or I might make a video where I list changes that I'd make to the game as a whole. 
Also, I'm sure many of you watching also have many ideas like these, and I'd love to see them. Feel free to leave a comment with your idea included, and I'll probably end up compiling my favorite ideas into a pinned comment. Maybe I'll make a video on those. Anyway, that's all I really had to say, so have a Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in my next video.